I bring you special greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. I am Shidi Okraf. I want to appreciate my great listeners, men and women that have been blessed in the past through our messages. Messages like the injury time, are we still brethren, University of Tears, should I still forgive him? Rachel, what are you sitting on? And several messages that have been tremendous blessings to men and women. Today, the Lord has put in our hearts another topic that will help the church. One great need of the hour is the need for revival. God reviving the church. Especially as we are, have experienced and we are experiencing signs of the end time. Things that depict the fact that the Lord Jesus Christ is coming soon. And his coming is closer than when we first believe. I want to invite you this moment to sit down or pay attention to this particular message and see what God wants to say. I have a burden to share with you a message on revival of the fear of God. Revival of the fear of God. Let's bow our heads in prayers. Ancient of days, we glorify your name. You are older than age. Thank you because your will is a great revival. We hit the church. I pray today that you open our eyes to understand the mysteries in your world. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Turn with me to the book of Exodus. I'm reading the book of Exodus. Let me begin to read from 15. Exodus chapter 1 from 15. Then the king of Egypt spoke to the Hebrew midwives, of whom the name of one was Shepra, and the name of the other poor. And he said, when you do the duties of a midwife for the Hebrew women and see them on the bastos, if it is a son, then you shall kill him. And if it is a daughter, then she shall leave. Verse 17. But the midwives feared God. I repeat. But the midwives feared God. But the midwives feared God. Because they feared God, they did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the male children alive. This is a very interesting familiar passage of the Holy Read. If you are a Bible student, you will know the story about how the people of Israel, how they moved into Egypt and at the fullness of time you know what happened in Egypt but while they were in Egypt the Bible says Joseph died and all his brothers and all the generation but the children of Israel were fruitful increased abundantly multiplied and grew exceedingly exceedingly mighty and the land was filled with them they filled everywhere so uh, and, and they had what I may call intimidating presence but there was a new king over egypt who did not know joseph and he said look the people of the children of israel are more and mightier than we come let us deal shrewdly with them lest they multiply and it happened in the event of war that they also join our enemies and fight against us and so go up out of the land Therefore, they set taskmasters over them to afflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh supply cities, Pitom and Ramses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were in dread of the children of Israel. Now, this Pharaoh, who knew not Joseph arose, he wanted to eliminate the people of Israel because he was afraid. He was afraid that they were growing, they were fruitful, they were multiplied. Now, he tried to give them strenuous jobs to do, 
setting tax masters over them that method did not work he decided to use another method and that method was to kill them especially to kill the males when they were born now look at it the bible said the king of egypt spoke to the hebrew midwives i want to remark something here who is the king of egypt the king of egypt is not a president in a democratic setting i remember a couple of years ago i was privileged to go to the white house i just sent to the white house i saw somebody carrying a kind of placard in the field i just sent to the white house he was protesting against the policy of the president let me call it this way the most powerful president in the face of the universe yes somebody was bold enough to carry a placard in that particular compound trying to protest why would they do that they would do that because it is in a democratic setting today as i speak to you as we turn through the pages of the dailies go to 10 downing street go to many democracy people can freely free expression they can talk they can air their opinion even if they are in opposition they can say look at our idea opposition that could be contrary to the policies of the government of the day why would they do that as i speak to you today as you thumb through the pages of the nigerian newspapers or any other national newspapers especially of a pro-democratic or democratic state you will see men protesting i mean criticizing the policies of the day or even the government of the day why would they do that they will do that because it is in a democracy democracy but when you think of pharaoh pharaoh was not operating in a democracy pharaoh was a monarch who is a monarch a man whose instructions are tantamount to decree who is a monarch a man who had the power to fire to kill here was a man the king of egypt the king of egypt he spoke to the hebrew midwives who are the hebrew midwives they are people that the king employed the king had the power to to sack them he had the power to give them accelerated promotion he had the power to make them great he had the power to do great favor he also had the power to imprison them by reason of the power of the king it was such a king that spoke to the hebrew midwives of whom the name of one was shipra and the other was poor and he said to them when you do the duties of a midwife for the hebrew women and see them on the bus too if it is a son then you shall kill him but if it is a daughter then she shall leave if it is a son kill the baby can you imagine a king is telling the subjects kill another person uh, today i know you are aware of the fact that there are people who have become political agents they have become thoughts another man will be in his luxurious house sending you to go and kill and shed blood and i just wanted to ask what did that what did this baby do the baby that they wanted to kill because the man was afraid of the emergence emergence of this young boy why did they say spare the women well that must be the time when people thought that um uh, women are weak but today women go to war today women can drive airplane today women can do great things well i know that they say what a man can do a woman can do it better but i don't believe in that what what i rather believe is that what a man can do a woman can try a woman can try not that a woman can do it better a woman can also try what a man can do a woman can also try well that's by the way but what i'm trying to say here is that he wanted to eliminate the man for fear but look at the cross of the message tonight the bible said the hebrew the midwives feared god i want you to lift up your hand and shout i fear god i fear god fearing god is not just cramming cactism fearing god is not belonging to a denomination 
Fearing God is not because you pray seven times every day. Fearing God is not because you go to church. That's not what we're talking about. Because they feared God. They did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them. Fear of God made them not to kill. Because they feared God, they didn't want to shed blood. Because they feared God, they disappointed Pharaoh's instruction. Because they feared God, they decided, I mean, they took a risk. Even if we are going to be sacked, let us be sacked. Even if we are going to be imprisoned, let us be imprisoned. But all we know is, we must fear God. Fearing God results to visible action, not just what you claim. Look at the power of the king of Egypt. Look at it. And then because they did that, so the king of Egypt called their midwives and said to them, Why have you not done this thing and saved the male children alive? Uh, uh, why, why did you not do the game plan? Why did you not carry the plan? The info that we had planned. Why did you not carry them out? The midwife said to Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women. For they are lively and give birth before the midwives come to them. I, I want to tell you if you are a child of God. Hear this word. Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women. There will be a difference between people who fear God and people who do not fear God. There will be a difference between people who carry the Bible and those who don't carry the Bible. There must be clear difference. That difference must be clear. He says, because, he, 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 said, if, he, said, if, he said, the Hebrew women, they are not like the Egyptian women. And I want to talk to somebody who is listening to me. What killed your forefathers will not kill you. Their limitations will not be your own limitation. Your case is different because you fear God. You have a romance with the Almighty God. And because of that, I speak over you even today. The generational sickness that have been pursuing your family people. The way they died will not be the way you die. Because your case is different. There's a different grace following you. You need to harness the treasures of being a child of God. You need to harness the treasures of being in the Lord. Well, let me pause there and get back. Because the Hebrew women did this. Therefore God dealt well with the midwives. And the people multiplied. And grew very mighty. I, I want to tell you. There's a reward for fearing God. People may cajole you. They may make mockery of you. But because you fear God, there's a great reward. There's a great grace. There is a great future. Nobody will regret fearing God. He said God dealt well with them. And because they feared God, he provided households for them. And I speak to you today. That's going to be your portion by the grace of God. Because you fear God. I want to tell you the problem that we have today in our current world. I want to even ask you a question. To what extent do you fear God? I'm not asking you whether a clergy, whether a laity. To what extent do you fear God? Now, listen to this. Today in our world, there are many people who live their daily life without the fear of God. They don't bother. They don't bother. And they have forgotten that everybody in this life, you are a tenant. You are a tenant in God's own earth. God has the power to give you quick notice. This is very, very certain. And for you, to, I've seen people, God put you on the throne and you don't want to fear him. God gave you the life and you don't want to fear him. You don't want to fear him. You want to do what you want to do. You shed blood. You send assassins, you do terrible things to eliminate a human being because you don't fear God. Now listen to me. Because you don't fear God, you can do anything. Because you don't fear God, you can talk anyhow. It's because you don't fear God. The problem we have today in the world, the problem we have today in the society is the lack of the fear of God. Scarcity of the fear of God. Scarcity of the fear of God. Where there are pastors who don't fear God. That's why they remain on the pulpit and commit atrocity. They carry Bible with one hand to another thing in another place. They don't fear God. They don't. They don't. There are politicians who don't fear God. Who are those? 
Oh, I pray that in every nation, in Nigeria and beyond, may God give us politicians who fear God. When you see thuggery, when you see bloodshed, when you see people who want to get into power, eliminating other opposition people or leaders, you begin to see men who don't fear God. Because they don't fear God, they want to come into the backyard because they don't fear God. Today, those who don't fear God can kill. Let me take you back. A whole king told midwives, kill the baby. Today, people are saying, pointing at this man, he's a potential, he's rising up, go and kill him. Go and eliminate him. Go, destroy him, shed blood. And let me tell you, how you get into office is a reapable seed. If you shed blood to get an office, you must reap it. As you're listening to me, you must reap it. And I want to talk to anybody here. If there be any person that you know who climbed up by eliminating, climbed up by shedding blood, climbed up by killing innocent people, that man will never escape. He will never escape the sword of God. No, except the man repent. I begin to pray today that the fear of God will hit our nation. The fear of God will hit our politicians. That the fear of God will hit our pastors. The fear of God will hit people who are in government. What am I trying to say? When you don't fear God as a politician, you can kill to get what you want. Are there no judiciary who don't fear God? Are there no magistrates and judges who don't fear God? They know the truth. But somebody will come and give you something, influence you with money, and then you know the truth and you go contrary to the truth. People who don't fear God, they write two judgments. If your money is big, they will deliver your own to your own favor. If your money is small, then you've lost the case. Justice, justice is denied people because people who are presiding over cases don't fear God. Oh God, when we talk about Nigerian corruption, when we talk about things, we are going to be a better place. This place will be better when we have judges that fear God. This women say, I fear God. Now look at it. It was a king. It was a king that was trying to tell them, kill the baby. I don't care who is telling you to give a wrong judgment. Let it be the president. Let it be a governor. Let it be a politician. Let it be a money bearer. Let it be a billionaire, a millionaire, giving you money, promising you, promising you houses and land, causing you to go contrary to for you to go contrary to what you know that is justice. What you know that is justice. Justice for the widow. Justice for the cheated. Justice for the defeated. Justice that somebody will win an election. Clearly win an election. Another man will carry money and give to a judge. And the judge will rule against the man that won the election. Because of the lack of the fear of God. Oh Father, I pray today that there shall be a revival of the fear of God in every corner. Today, when you don't fear God, you can take bribe. You can receive bribe. Are there not executives who don't fear God? People in government. He may be governor, may be president, may be minister. What have we not seen? Men who will siphon fund. Take money that the attend generation cannot finish. Why the nation will suffer. In everywhere. When people are elected into power. They are elected for the benefit of people that they are ruling. They are elected for the benefit of the people that voted them into the power. They are elected for the welfare of people who elected them into power. But when people don't fear God, as they climb up, they do funny things, they are selfish, they do what they want to do to themselves, they siphon money, pull it down, People may be suffering. Society may be suffering. They don't care at all. They go about their normal thing, moving their own money, being very selfish, surrounding themselves with a lot of money. I pray that there will be revival of the fear of God. That's what we are talking about today, that the Lord, many of these people fill the churches. Uh, let me tell you, 
God is not a beggar. If you shed blood and then you come and build cathedral and the people are clapping for you that you build cathedral, that's nonsensical nonsense. It doesn't move God. Men might clap for you, but they know how you got your money. They know how you stole. Either you stole public money or you made human sacrifice or you did something terrible. You got the money. I want to tell you today, the amount of money you use in sowing seed in the church does not determine your relationship with God. I know that we are now faced with society. People are deceived about sowing of seed. Sowing of seed. I sow this, I sow this. You stole money, you go and sow the money on the apostles' feet. You go and sow the money in the general overseer's feet. Carry bill millions and give to him and he will bless you. Bless you upon your iniquity. Bless you upon the bloody money. Bless you upon the terrible thing that you did. And let me tell you today, nobody can bribe God. Nobody. Nobody can bribe God. Not by your cathedrals. Not by what you have built. Not at all. Not even by what you did on the harvest day. If you like, buy a car and give to the bishop. If you like, buy a car and give to the pastor. A sinner is a condemned criminal awaiting execution. You are inescapable. Because nobody, you cannot hide it from God. There's a song that says, You cannot hide it from God. You cannot hide it from God. You may cover your sin so that nobody will know, but you cannot hide it from God. This is a generation of intelligent sinners, need sinners, people who commit atrocities. Why can't you know those who fear God cannot get rich by all means? I want to get rich by all means. That's not the vocabulary of people who fear God. When you see somebody who wants to get rich by all means, he does not fear God. Fear of God will keep you on track. Fear of God will cause you. You know, there are people who fear shrine more than God. They fear their idols more than God. Some fear native doctors more than God. Oh, you are mistaking the silence of God because God does not strike you when you commit that atrocity and that's why somebody is not even fearing God do you know why he doesn't want to do that thing because they told him if you do it your village shrine will strike you dead that's why you are being careful not even that you have a respect for God I want to tell you that God is silent today does not mean he will be silent forever he is giving somebody a chance opportunity for you to reconcile and make peace with him now i want to tell you fear some people fear leaders they fear committee more than god that's why they are not afraid of the ten commandment they are only afraid of the eleventh commandment and the eleventh commandment said thou shall not be caught make them no catch you do everything hide it don't be afraid. Some get too familiar with God. You see, I, I, I want to let you know, there have been great, great, some uh, certain stories trying to trend, even in the internet. And I want to draw your attention to these stories. And probably it might help you drive home what I'm talking about concerning the fear of God. Yes. Because there is a man called Tancredo Nex. This man was president of Brazil. And the story has it that during the presidential campaign, he said, if he gets 500,000 votes from his political party, not even God will remove him from the presidency. If I can get 500,000 votes from my political party, not even God can remove me from the presidency. Wow. A man who does not fear God can make a careless statement. Careless comment. But look at, let me tell you what played. God left him. He got the vote. He got the vote, over 500,000 votes. Beyond that, he was elected the president. And God was silent. 
Maybe people who had to make that comment, they say, where is God? You mean this man later became a president? You mean this man later won the election? Yes, it happened. He got the vote. He was rejoicing, getting ready for his inauguration. But he got sick a day before his inauguration. He got sick. And guess what happened? And he died. He died. I want to talk to somebody. I want to talk to that politician. I want to talk to whoever you are. You may win election through shedding of blood. But God may say you will not rule. God may say you will not be sworn in. And you can die a day before your inauguration. That's what we are talking about. Somebody must consider seriously the thing, the issue of the fear of God. Who are you? Somebody has the bread. Do you have the bread? You collect everything, collect every land from every widow. Kill them and you come to your place and say, yes, I'm in charge. Hear me, somebody is above you. Somebody had the power to eliminate you. Somebody had the power to cause you to disappear from the universe. And so that man died. The man who said, he died. And that's why somebody must hear this message. You must take this message to everybody. You must take this message to people. God elevated and they have no room for God. They have no provision for God. And what, what do we see? Are, are there not people today, before any election, they'll be going to church. They'll be gathering church people. They will become church members. They will just begin to go to every church gathering. Just to gather their votes. But when they elected into power, they bring about policies that are against God. Policies that are against the, the word of God. Policies contrary to the God who raised them. I want to remind you today, God has the power to raise somebody up. The same God has the power to bring somebody down. He has the power to do that. You see, one of the reasons why we should be very, very attentive. Do you know that one stubborn sickness can render you helpless. One stubborn sickness can put you out of office. Yes. Apart from that, there was this uh, young Brazilian, bisexual Brazilian. He was a composer, a singer, and a poet. And um, in, a very, in a show, to show that he does not fear God. You know what this person did? He popped up some smoke puffed up some smoke into the air as he was smoking cigarette and he said hi god that's for you that's for you he just gave god a part of the smoke ah oh, hi god that's for you he gave god a portion of the smoke the cigarette he was smoking but look at what happened to him he died at the age of 32 of a lung cancer in a very horrible manner because he wanted to joke with God. If there is somebody by your side, tell him don't mess with God. Touch that person. Tell him don't mess with God. You better not joke with God. God is not your classmate. He's not your classmate. Yes. You know that this great story about the Titanic. Titanic, the man who built the Titanic. After the construction of the cruise ship, Titanic, a reporter ask him a question how safe the titanic would be how safe is that ship with a very ironic voice in a tone do you know what he said not even god can sink it the thing is so strong that not even god can sink it well the result i think you all know what happened i want to give you an assignment go and research how what Cost the Titanic to sink. But the man said, Not even God can sink it. Not even God can sink it. And God answered. God showed up. He showed up. And I want to tell you today, you need to think twice about what we are talking about. Look at one, 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 one girl, one girl without the fear of God. A group of friends who were drunk went to pick up another friend 
when they went to pick this friend the mother of that young girl accompanied her to the car the mother was so worried about the drunkenness of her friends and the mother said to her friend he said to her daughter holding her hand because the daughter was already seated in the car the mother came close held the hand of the daughter and said my daughter go with god and may he protect you the girl responded only if god travels in the trunk what we call a boot he said ma'am inside is already full no space for god to travel with us you can accept if god will agree to travel in the trunk in the boot of the motor she made such terrible statement and they drove off hours later hours later the news came that they were involved in a fatal accident everybody died everybody died in that vehicle the car could not be recognized but surprisingly the trunk was intact the boot was intact why god traveled in the trunk god traveled in the boot inside the vehicle the girl said it was too full to occupy god for god to join them god and that's not even the end of the story it even shocked the police that the trunk inside the trunk was a crate of eggs crate of eggs and none of them was broken none of the crates was broken why 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 because god traveled in the trunk you don't joke with god you don't joke with god or you don't joke with him and his name i pray that there shall be revival of the fear of god when people don't fear god look at the rumbling today same sex rumbling some people are too careful even in the western world some christians are too careful to condemn same sex rumbling so that the, the the government will not be against them that a man will marry a man a woman will marry a woman and if you go to the western world they say they are the billionaire they are money people money people and that's why and at least i want to appreciate once again at least at least the fact that the nigerian legislature they stood to the times and resisted every pressure in to to cause us to begin to adopt same-sex marriage it is a departure lack of the fear of god that's why you see male ma thinking of marrying male female marrying female people now drink hormone to translate to woman if it is natural why do you need to take hormone so that you begin to have certain features of the female that's what we tell you the world where we are in people are no longer afraid of god because people don't fear god that's why they commit abortion either they commit or they sponsor abortion because they don't fear god they plot evil they plot evil because they do not fear god they eliminate people through poison eliminate people through assassination how many have been eliminated how many have been poisoned because people don't fear god and if you don't fear god you overstretch quarrel till rapture you overstretch a quarrel because you do not fear god i want to draw your attention to somewhere and see what the bible says today when you read the book of hebrews chapter 10 verse 31 hebrews chapter 10 verse 31 uh, he, he says it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the almighty god and let me remind you today when you fall into the hand of criminals god can deliver you you fall into the hand of kidnappers god can deliver you you fall into the hand of ritualists god can deliver you you fall into the hand of the police 
God can deliver you. You fall into the hand of Satan. God can deliver you. But if you fall into the hands of the Almighty God, who shall deliver you? I was reading the scripture the other day, and he said, the day I will deal with you, no man shall be able to deliver you from my hand. You see, when you fear God, God will be at the center of your life. When you fear God, what he says and thinks will become the most important thing in your life. I, 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 there are many implications of fearing God. I, I was reading Job. Job was very rich, but he feared God. And the Bible says, if you get back to Job chapter 1 verse 8, Job chapter 2 verse 3, take it again. Job chapter 1 verse 8 and Job chapter 2 verse 3. We know that Job was very rich, yet he feared God. If you are a millionaire, billionaire, let me tell you, you are not richer than Job, yet he feared God. It is not your money that makes you not to fear God, but it is your choice that makes you not to fear God. There are people who fear God. After all, who raised you? Is it not God? The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Silver and gold are mine, says the Lord. Who told you that a rich man cannot worship God? Who told you that a millionaire billionaire cannot be a child of God? Job is an example. He feared God. Uh, but look at what the Bible said. He feared God and shunned evil. You cannot claim that you fear God without shunning evil. Without shunning evil. You must fear God. You must fear God and shun evil. Fear of God will drag you into the shunning of evil. We must distinguish in the church between people who fear God and people who don't fear God. If anybody fears God, it will determine, it will, it will, it will, it will influence where he goes. It will influence the kind of friends he will make. If you fear God, you won't put your hands in terrible things. Now, if you look at Job chapter 2 verse 3, Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth? A harmless, an upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil. Look at that word. He fears God and shuns evil. He fears God and then says no to evil. You cannot fear God. No, no, no. You can't be fearing God and you are in witch doctor's house. It's not possible. You cannot be fearing God and you are taking bribe. You cannot fear God and you are cheating widows. You cannot fear God and you are committing abomination. Committing abomination. Committing adultery. You cannot say you fear God and you do those terrible things. He says, he still holds fast to his integrity. That's what the Bible says. And if you go to Hebrews, I mean the same Job chapter 1, verse 8. The Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant, Job, that there is none like him on the earth? A blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil. There are implications. This man was very rich, yet he feared God. But he was brought low. If you get back to his story, in the book of Job, Job chapter 42, verse 10, the Bible said, And the Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. Indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. I want to let you know that there are treasures of fearing God. People might mock you. You might look stupid before men because you want to fear God. But I tell you, you will not be disappointed because you've decided to fear God. You will never, 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 never be disappointed. I pray today that the fear of God, fear of the Almighty, consciousness of the presence of God in whatever we do, when I know in the darkest dark is the invisible eye. As I move along, even the thought in my heart, if I fear God, I will know that the Lord monitors me. If I fear God, if I fly out, 
No wonder the Bible says, Where can I run from God? Where will I run away from Him? Go to the sea. He sees you. Fly in the air. He sees you. Switch off the light. Even if you switch off the light, He is there. He is there. Darkness cannot prevent him. Darkness cannot hide the eyes of God. He sees you. He knows you. He knows what you're doing in the dark. He knows how to handle you. He is God. I want to talk to you. In case you no longer fear God. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is man's all. This is man's all. Fear God and keep his commandment. Why? Why should I fear God and keep his commandment? He said in verse 14, For God will bring every work into judgment. He will bring every activity into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. That's the conclusion of the matter. That God will bring everything, every secret thing, Every secret thing, every secret thing, whether it were done in darkness, whether it were done in light, every secret plot, God shall bring them to judgment. Every secret plan to eliminate people, God shall bring them into judgment. And that's why you must join me today in this message for a revival of the fear of God. Why should we see secret sin in the church? Because men have failed to fear God. Why should we see things? Things that uh, should naturally be found outside. They are now being found inside. Because even some church members no longer fear God. And that's why they've decided to tread on roads. We are angels fear to tread. I pray, O oh Lord, restore your fear. Restore your fear. And I want to talk to you as an individual. Are there things you used to do before and your conscience will flog you? Are there lifestyles you abhorred? Terrible things you dare not enter? Yes, by that time you had the fear of God. By that time you dare not do what you know God hates. You dare not do what you know that God says you should not do because you had the fear of God. You didn't want to go to hell. You are afraid of the judgment of God. You are afraid. You don't want to run out of the mercy of God. But now I want to ask you, who bewitched you? Who changed your mentality? Who twisted your philosophy? Who dragged you to the mud? Who changed your sight? Who changed your consciousness? Why do you ignore the presence of God and do what you want to do? Why are you not concerned about the judgment of God? And you now go about, you started eating with the devil. You started moving on roads you feared before. What you condemned in yesteryears, you've gone back. You have become a dog. You have returned to your vomit because lack of the fear of God. Can you be on your knees? Can you seek God? Can you tell him, Papa, restore your fear in my life. Look at the Hebrew midwives. Hebrew midwives, they were not afraid of losing their job. Oh, is that why? Is that your problem? You are afraid of losing your appointment. You are afraid of losing your customers. You are afraid of losing your job. You are afraid of losing your position. You are afraid of being thrown away. And that's why you are compromising. You don't care what God says, but you care what people say. You don't care what God says, but you care about what your boss says. You don't care what people say, what, what God says, but you care about what your community said. You don't care about uh, what human beings, I mean, you care about what human beings will say, and because of that, you are deadly, becoming deadly. Can you repent even today? Say, Lord, I've lost the sense of your fear. I've gone back to my vomit. I've gone back to things I rejected in the past. Forgive me. Revive your fear. Can you join us to say, Lord, send down revival and let it begin in me. Let it begin in me. Papa, what happened to me? What happened to my life? 
What happened to your fear in me? What happened? What happened? You know, there you need to say, take the whole world and give me Jesus. I won't go back. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. That word behind me, that cross before me. That word behind me, that cross before me. That word behind me, that cross before me. No turning back. No turning back. The Lord will help you today. He will forgive you. He will restore you. My prayer is that the fear of God be restored to your life. Bow your heads in prayer. Bow your heads in prayer. Can you be sincere to him? Transparently, Lord, I've lost sense of your fear. I've gone back to my vomit. Things I rejected in the past, I have gone to pick them up. I've been deceived by the devil. I no longer have a regard to what you say. I no longer have a regard to what your word says. I have joined the multitude. I have joined the crowd to do evil and abomination. Forgive me, Lord. Cleanse me. Give me the power to serve you. And Lord, revive your fear in my life. Revive your fear in my lifestyle. Revive your fear in my private life. Let me pray with you today. Father, I give you the glory and I give you the praise. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord. We are sorry that those who feared you in the past, they have abandoned it halfway. And they are now more concerned about what people will say. What people will say, they are more concerned about public opinion. More than what you're saying. People, because they do not fear you, they are enriching themselves in an ungodly way. They are obeying what Pharaoh asked them to do. Pharaoh asked them to shed blood and they obey. They now obey mortal men instead of you. Papa, I pray for your forgiveness. I pray for your cleansing. Lord, revive your fear in the life of this listener. Revive your fear in the life of the church. Revive your fear in the judiciary. Revive your fear in the executive. Revive your fear in the legislature. So that legislators will not collect money and keep quiet in areas where they should talk. That this nation might move forward to the glory of your holy name. We just bless you, Lord. Thank you. Deliver men and women from shedding blood, pursuing somebody who didn't do them anything because they just want to obey the voice of Pharaoh. Be thou glorified. We adore you, Lord. Bring this great revival to the glory of your holy name. Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you for delivering people, pulling them from the kingdom of darkness unto light. We just give you the glory. Thank you for answered prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.